The Japanese beetle, a nasty pest here in Pennsylvania on turf grass areas and also on ornamentals. We're going to take a look at the life cycle to better understand this pest and also give us some clues on how we can control the Japanese beetle. The Japanese beetle goes through four life stages. The egg, the larval stage, the pupa stage, and then finally the adult. Because it goes four, through these four stages, we say that the Japanese beetle exhibits complete metamorphism. The young, the juveniles, do not look anything like the adult. They completely change, they metamorphize into a different form. Let me take a look at the entire year at a glance here at the life of the Japanese beetle. From left to right you'll see we start in January and go all the way through to December on the right. What we're going to do, we're going to actually start in the middle of the year, let's say early July, when the adults emerge. Here in Pennsylvania it's, it's typically the first couple weeks of July. This emergence can extend for two, three weeks, sometimes longer depending on the weather conditions. This is when we're going to see the peak emergence of the Japanese beetle. And you'll see that uh, on the uh, uh, ornamental plant that we show pictured, these adults are going to start feeding uh, basically right away. They love certain plants. They show preferential uh, eating habits. They'll prefer things like roses and, and grapes and also some crops of economic value. But really their primary function when they come out of the ground as adults, they want to mate and the females will lay eggs. The females will look for lush turf grass areas that are a little bit softer, more lush, so it's easier for her to lay those eggs. It also kind of ensures that those eggs will develop normally in, in good conditions. Now those eggs that are laid will again develop into larvae. This larval stage is sometimes called the grub stage. This is real key because this is the young vulnerable stage of the Japanese beetle. Even though we can control it at other times of the year, this is the most vulnerable stage. It's young, it's eating, it's close to the surface. So oftentimes this is the stage that we target if we're using a chemical control. Now as the cold weather comes on, it's going to force the larvae deeper into the soil. Now you can see if we were trying to control them at this point, it would be very difficult because they're very deep in the soil. It would be almost impossible to get any kind of chemical control down to that stage. Plus they're not feeding. And it's also the stage, the grub stage at this time of year, that they're going to overwinter as larvae. Now in the spring, the warmer temperatures will move the larvae back upward closer to the surface. At this time of year, it's a much bigger larvae, much bigger grub. It will feed, but it doesn't have the appetite uh, that the young larvae had in the fall. Also, typically with the spring rains, we don't see the damage. The rains seem to mask the damage. The grass keeps growing, so we really never see much damage. Uh, it can occur, but it's very rare. The other thing is we do normally don't treat this time of year. Uh, you know, we don't see the damage, so we don't treat. The other thing to keep in mind, if you've done a good job in the fall, there's no way that you can have new, more grubs in the spring. There's no above ground life stage from that fall to the spring. So the only grubs you'll see in the spring are those that have survived the fall in the winter time and then start coming up in the spring. That's real key because when we look at controls, we typically don't look at that early spring as a control period. Of course, the larvae are going to pupate. This is the final stage before they emerge as adults. And here we're back to July and the adults will emerge. We can control the adults and sometimes it's necessary to protect our crops and also our ornamentals, but it's not the prime focus of our controls. Again, it was much easier to control the grub stage in the fall uh, when they were young and hungry. And there's the adults feeding on some of the above ground vegetation. Okay, I hope that helps you understand the Japanese beetle life cycle better. And if you have any additional questions, please contact us at the Pesticide Education Program.